So I've been wanting to make these like weekly recap videos for a while now where I pretty much just go over all my lifting from the previous week. So we're going to try and start doing that here. This is the second week of my force block, force being the number of reps that I'm doing in pretty much every set. Um, second week, days one through four, and I'll, I'll explain each one in so different days. You'll see usually by what I'm wearing because I do wear different things every workout. This is day one right here. First day, I do my competition deadlift. You're going to see here, I'm pretty sure this is 400 and let me just do the quick math. 425, 30, I think 440 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, move pretty well. Move pretty, pretty well. Um, very happy about that. The back downs were easy as well. And we're really just waiting for the weight to start pile up on this one. Uh, I think just trying to gain that momentum is really important, you know? Really trying to enforce that. Next this is later on, on the same day we have block pulls this is something that i've been doing recently that i really enjoy find it helps lockout of course there's two reasons um there's two issues with my lockout one is the positioning off the floor the other one is you know actually the lockout strength so this is going to be improving the physical lockout strength you're going to see i'm going to rep it out for six here which is pretty good um and then off the floor we have another day later on in the same video that i'll, I'll explain deficit deadlifts now we've made separate videos on that in general but that's the idea the thing behind block pulls is you want to start with your back in around the same position that it would actually be for where the barbell is you also want to keep the barbell a slightly below knee height just because it's a little bit easier that way just i i find that you're actually getting a little bit more out of the movement from that if you start below knee height so that's the six there uh, I really like this movement, and I've been incrementing the weight very, very slowly, but I will be keep on incrementing it. Next, we have squats. This ended up being an RP 7.5. Not too happy about that, but it did move. Um, I am actually super excited because I got a new pair of knee sleeves from Black Friday. A7 Canada had a massive, massive sale where uh, a pair of knee sleeves was $20 Canadian. Uh, if you don't know the price of knee sleeves, they're usually around 70 to 80 on the low side. Some of them like SBD brands go up to 150, 160. So this was extremely cheap. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be switching over to a new pair of knee sleeves. They're supposed to be slightly tighter. So just so you understand the ones I'm wearing here, are like the base, then there's like a stiff and then there's something called rigor mortis. I didn't get the rigor mortis. I just got the stiff version and then... Uh, I have essentially the rigor mortis, except it's not actually A7 rigor mortis, it's injures and injures. It's really, really stiff. So they only have one version, and that's what I have. So for training, in general purpose, I'm going to use the stiff ones that I'm about to get, and you'll see transition there. Uh, here is my bench. This is four reps at 225. Move pretty well. This is on the same day as the squat. Um, I felt like this move then in RP6, to be completely honest. My bench has been really good lately. I'm actually very surprised that I missed my PR um, like two, three weeks ago. Just because, I don't know, it didn't really feel like a weight I should be missing right now. More in the fact that like, I don't know, I feel like I have the strength here. It's just going to be moving really well. Like you'll see I'm doing a four for RP6. I mean, the pause in it isn't perfect. It isn't perfect. I, I agree with that. But that will come with reps. That will come with time. That will come as we get closer to the competition. So that's not something I'm upset about at all. Now, we are moving on to the next day. This is from Wednesday morning. Uh, or Yes, this was Wednesday morning. Maybe a little bit closer to the afternoon. But deficit deadlifts, 405. This is a heavy step gone so far on deficit deadlifts. Always have to, <laughs> of course, adjust the plate underneath. Uh, to try to center myself. I find that this exercise is really good. I like it for two main reasons. And again, the main one from before is that it helps your positioning off the ground, specifically for your back, to help that a little bit more. And I find that super important. And then the other thing is just quad strength. I think that because you're getting your knees, you have to physically go lower, you're going to get more push out of your quads and that will increase your strength. And hopefully have a really good carryover to both your squat and your deadlift. So that's why I really like this. Uh, I will be going heavier in this. We're following the RPE. This looked like a, uh, a six, honestly. I think I wrote down as a six or 6.5. Next, we have my squats. This was from yesterday. 
uh, yesterday being Friday, uh, I did in the morning, or well, more like late afternoon, this was, if you see on the clock there, one thirty, about, one twenty. uh, this definitely moved pretty well, I think this was a 6.5 or a 7, uh, which is exactly what we want, finally moving a lot better, I thought that was just, my warm-up was a lot better yesterday, uh, my groove was a lot there, um, my back, I have had an injury fairly recently with my back, and I was feeling it a little bit, but I did stretch it out, and it wasn't really impeding on this at all. I genuinely think I could have gotten another three pretty easily, if not three and a half, right? RP 6.57. And then we finish this off with Spoto bench press. I really like Spoto because I made a video on this recently if you want to go ahead and check that out. But the idea behind it is that you're really just working on the lockout range. You're really working on where you struggle the most. And for me, I struggle the most uh, at a specific sticking point about mid-range and then pushing the rest of the way to lockout. And this is essentially only doing that movement. So it's really important. As well, it's an overloading movement, so I'm able to get more weight on the bar. That's fairly important as well. You're going to see some very solid pauses for the first two. And then the third one's a little bit more iffy, but, you know, that's just how it is. Oh, actually it isn't. It was pretty good. So that's the general idea. And that's this week. See you guys in the next one. Peace.